So the New South Wales syllabus uh, states that we need to look at a case study of a large city in the developed world, the urban dynamics and the resulting change. So this video is going to look at a bit of an introduction to Sydney as a city, as a world city, and uh, some of its demographic characteristics. Then we're going to look at its uh, uh, socio-economic characteristics, the uh, wealth, the, the disadvantage, and uh, patterns of ethnicity as well. So Sydney is uh, quite a, a large city, both in the geographical sense and the uh, population sense for Australia. Um, obviously, you can see the statistics there. In terms of its, its extent, this city would range from Wollongong all the way north to um, Newcastle and become a megalopolis, essentially, if it wasn't for a few uh, things, one of which was the Hawkesbury region, the Hawkesbury River, and the surrounding national park, and also the Royal National Park. To the west, um, Sydney can no further longer um, expand or sprawl because of the Blue Mountains. Blue Mountains, of course, pro uh, provide a bit of a challenge for the early settlers uh, to reach the uh, golden plains of, of the west. So 650 suburbs. Uh, we'll be looking at not all 650, but we'll get a bit of an overview of some of those. So there's a, a map of the metropolitan region of Sydney. Obviously, you can see the further west, north, and south uh, you move, the uh, suburb or the local government areas, the LGAs, become uh, quite big. Now it's difficult to see all of those, but uh, you get a bit of an idea of the size of Sydney and uh, the, the various areas made up of it. Okay, so social structure, patterns of advantage, disadvantage, wealth, poverty, ethnicity. Sydney, like many cities, is, uh, many cities of the developed world, has both wealthy areas and poor areas. Uh, some people would say that poverty doesn't exist in Australia, but poverty exists within Sydney. That's relative poverty. Of course, it would be very difficult to find uh, your absolute poverty uh, in existence within Australia and Sydney in particular, because of our welfare scheme. Uh, that's not to say that there are many homeless people living in Sydney who uh, struggle daily, um, but uh, yes, uh, disadvantage definitely exists within Sydney. Uh, and Sydney's known for its uh, multicultural makeup. Uh, we'll look at that in a little bit. So here's some stats from the uh, City of Sydney website, looking at Greater Sydney in particular. Um, some statistics from the 2011 census. So these figures will be updated shortly after the uh, figures are collated from the 2015 census. So I'll let you read through some of those first. So in regards to demographics, uh, Sydney's experiencing rapid growth uh, every week, essentially, um, just the same as all other urban centres globally. They're continuing to grow because of uh, those pull factors and the push factors from regional and rural areas. Uh, Sydney is dynamic. It's ever-changing. It presents with uh, its population with lots of opportunities, and it's uh, a desirable place to live. So when looking at advantage and disadvantage, one measure that we can use, or an indicator, or a collection of indicators, is the CIFA index. And this comes to us from the ABS, and uh, we're going to look at one of those in graphic, or in a cartographic form, I guess you could say. Um, and that's the uh, IRSAD, so the uh, Index of Relative Socioeconomic Advantage and Disadvantage. So we're going to look at Sydney, or at least a, a, a big part of Sydney and its advantage and disadvantage. So this map uh, obviously put together using the IRSAD um, uh, statistics uh, shows us the patterns of wealth and disadvantage within Sydney. So if we look to the, the east, we see the CBD, we see the eastern suburbs, uh, Bondi Junction. Uh, to the north, we have the North Shore. Um, uh, to the south, we have the southern suburbs, the Shire, Botany Bay, the west, we have uh, out towards Penrith, uh, Blacktown, Campbelltown, those areas. 
and uh, to the northwest we have the uh, the hills district. So to interpret this, we can have a look at uh, the dark red uh, representing uh, the most uh, disadvantaged regions. So in terms of how would we describe the most disadvantaged regions, one thing we can do is split this into uh, quadrants. So the southwestern region of this map in particular, uh, so areas like Liverpool, uh, Bankstown, Auburn and the surrounding uh, suburbs, uh, based upon the, this particular statistic, the most disadvantaged. Uh, also to the northwest, we have uh, areas such as Mount Druitt, uh, Plumpton and the surrounding areas also uh, being somewhat disadvantaged. Uh, opposed to this, we have the, the northern shore, the north shore, uh, most disadvantaged uh, regions, regions <coughs> um, and also the inner east, eastern suburbs. So the IISAD uh, from the CIFA index is a useful measure to look advantage and disadvantage. So remember um, that quadrant, uh, northwest and southwest disadvantage with pockets of advantage, of course, and um, obviously the North Shore, inner eastern suburbs, and and uh, some other areas and inner west uh, most advantaged. So we can definitely see somewhat of a split if we're looking at uh, Western Sydney and uh, Sydney uh, proper. So of course both these areas uh, make up uh, the greater Sydney metropolitan area, but there's somewhat of a split. So I guess you could look at this split being the Western Sydney Wanderers and the Sydney FC. So you've got uh, the Cove and the RBB, so the red and black block. Um, of course these are only new uh, cultural uh, uh, traditions of Sydney, but uh, there's still somewhat of a split, and uh, there's some stereotypes that go with uh, the east and the west. But uh, as we saw before with the CIFA index, there's somewhat of a split in terms of advantage and disadvantage. But according to that uh, image below, we'd probably say that the Western Sydney Wanderers are more uh, enthusiastic, let's go with that term, about their uh, team. So the eastern suburbs. So if we have a look here on the on the left, so this is uh, Australia's ten richest suburbs. If you look through that list, there are only two suburbs that are not in uh, the inner eastern uh, suburbs of uh, Sydney or, or eastern suburbs, North Shore uh, of Sydney. So the only other two are, are in Perth in WA. Um, so what does this say? Uh, these areas are uh, extremely wealthy, um, real estate extremely expensive, uh, people travel to the CBD, these might be people who, who work in the CBD, might work in uh, quite high paying jobs, uh, don't have to commute too far and uh, obviously that's representative in those statistics there. If we look at that oblique aerial image with Sydney we can see out to the, the outer west and uh, we've also got the harbour in the, in the foreground. So your particular cultural stereotypes, the Bondi hipsters, so uh, you know um, this might be representative of the rich eastern suburbs wearing their, their cultural traits. Uh, these two comedic actors taking a, a bit of uh, mickey out of uh, these uh, residents but uh, in the same sense you've got those those uh, stereotypes of the of the east. So Greater Western Sydney, if we have a look at this map here, we can see the divide. Uh, areas including Bankstown, Parramatta, Blacktown, Liverpool, Castle Hill and out to Penrith. So this is Greater Western Sydney, of course uh, it has its um, stereotypes. Uh, from the map before we saw that there are areas of disadvantage, but it's definitely a growth area. Um, as you can see here, it's the fastest growing region in Australia. Um, it's made up of 14 councils and uh, it's definitely a, a, an area of growth both in the economic sense and demographic sense, so the population sense. It's becoming a, quite a major region. So uh, this is a map showing the uh, median income, household income uh, of Sydney. So we can see the wealthier areas in the North Shore out towards the northwest, so the Hills District 
and of course uh, your eastern suburbs with some pockets of wealth in the um, southwest and southern regions of Sydney. So areas that are uh, bright purple, uh, or dark purple I should say, are your areas of disadvantage. Um, in the northern uh, North Shore you can also see some areas, some pockets of uh, purple, but those areas are uh, dominated by parklands. Okay, so here's a couple more images showing that. So um, the top image there, looking at uh, looking at income, so taxable income by postcode. So those green areas representing wealthier areas, and the red representing the, the more disadvantaged lower income areas. So at the bottom, obviously, you can see the. The Western Sydney are stereotypes, so houses, housing commission areas. Um, and there are some areas within Western Sydney and also within uh, inner Sydney, and um, in particular that uh, also housing commission areas. But uh, that's your general stereotype of Western Sydney. Uh, stereotypes, as we know, are not always completely true, and uh, you've got a uh, and pr probably in the case of houses, uh, <laughs> extremely. Uh, blown out of proportion. So the uh, the image there from the bottom left was uh, as an outcome of SBS's program um, Struggle Street which uh, looked at a, a community in Mount Druitt and some of the social issues in that area. But as we saw, as I said before, uh, Western Sydney is growing in terms of its population also it's, um, uh, I guess it's real estate uh, worth. So these areas have been particularly affected by suburbanisation uh, mid to late last century, urban sprawl out towards the Blue Mountains and this uh, image at the bottom left is an interesting one, mortgage stress. So mortgage stress is if you're paying more than 30% of your household income uh, to your mortgage and obviously you can see the your southwestern region of Sydney having uh, both mortgage pain and rent stress. So. Uh, people that may be feeling the, the crunch of those rising house prices but not experiencing the benefit of increased employment uh, and uh, increased, uh, I guess, uh, income. So one particular suburb within Western Sydney that uh, struggles um, in terms of its, uh, I guess, social uh, issues is Claymore. So this was an area that was... Uh, thought up by the and put into practice and developed by the New South Wales state government in the uh, late seventies of uh, last century. And if we have a look at some of the demographic data, we can see it's only a small community with only a couple of thousand people. But the median age is representative of its um, of some of its challenge. So a particularly young population. Whereas if we compare that to the North Shore and some of the North Shore areas, where your median age would be almost double that. Uh, very low um, median uh, household income of only five hundred plus dollars, and um, obviously this is a, a quite a large scale housing uh, commission area. Uh, in the news, there've been a lot of, um, I guess, focus on some of these uh, social issues, issues with um, uh, social misbehaviour, uh, crime, and so much so that. Uh, the government and other people have become involved in trying to transform that community. Um, obviously, a lot of disadvantage within uh, disadvantage within that area, youth unemployment. So you can see that uh, article there on the right. So when we look at uh, Sydney's ethnic uh, makeup. We know that uh, Sydney is a multicultural hotspot. There's a melting pot of, of cultures and people from all places around the world, whether uh, because of uh, immigration policies, you've got uh, increased immigration in the last half of last century. And this uh, map, uh, and a screenshot from the SBS website, looks at um, some of the, the hotspots for uh, I guess migrant populations, uh, red representing China. You can have a look at the other areas. So uh, that's a quite an interesting map that I'd uh, recommend you have a look at. Uh, it's just a quick overview of some of the uh, ethnic uh, characteristics of some of these suburbs. 
so in terms of the spatial distribution, we can see that uh, uh, Chinese populations dominate the inner west of Sydney. Uh, you have uh, Indian population in, towards the southwest. You've got Fijian population uh, in the uh, southwest as well. And uh, also a Maltese population in, in the Hills District in the northwestern region of Sydney. So again, uh, another map, you can have a look at uh, that um, extract from uh, Google Maps Mania blogspot, quite a, an interesting blogspot which uh, has uh, a lot of uh, maps and spatial uh, uh, technology uh, data and information. Uh, that's a useful map to look at the, the spread of cultures throughout Sydney. It's definitely, like I said before, uh, multicultural. It's um, represented in some of its local communities, so you can go from suburb to suburb and, and those uh, ethnic uh, communities are represented in uh, whether that's uh, cafe culture in some of uh, these areas or um, your restaurants or your architecture. It's definitely uh, recognisable in some of Sydney's suburbs. Okay, so median age, another demographic characteristic. So uh, as I said before, Claymore had uh, quite a young median age, one of the youngest median ages in Sydney of 20 years of age. So if we have a look here, like I said before, your uh, more elderly populations are in on the North Shore, your younger populations are in the southwest, and also the, the inner areas of Sydney. Younger people may be attending uh, university in some of those big campuses such as UNSW, Sydney University, UTS in uh, inner Sydney. And that, of course, means that there's a a younger population in those areas. So uh, Sydney's known for its its Mardi Gras that happens annually. There's quite a large gay and lesbian community within Sydney, and uh, you've uh, got some uh, useful images there. So Sydney's rainbow ribbon. So this comes from a article from news.com.au. So some of these uh, suburbs have uh, quite a high proportion of gay and lesbian uh, and transgender population, and uh, this is obviously recognisable in, in Oxford Street, but also uh, in some other areas such as Newtown, uh, Redfern, Chippendale and Alexandria. So I have a bit of a reflect upon what, I, what I've said. Uh, I've come away with a few uh, summary dot points of Sydney's demographic characteristics, whether that's the um, uh, spatial distribution of advantage, disadvantage, what are some areas of wealth, what are some areas of disadvantage, uh, have a uh, look back at its uh, ethnic makeup, what are some areas of uh, ethnic, uh, uh, um, ethnic, uh, uh, yeah, diversity was the word I was looking for. Um, look at that and then uh, make some relevant summary notes.